we're finally going to show you our new RV. The Grand Design Solitude 310 GK. We'll share with you what we like and what we don't. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz and this is Paul. These are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And we're certainly trying to live amazing in our new RV. So it feels a little strange to be talking about something um, like a new RV in these times of coronavirus and wondering where we're going to be in a month. We hear you that you want to see it and we are going to give you a tour. We're going to show you the good, the bad. So this is the eighth camper I've owned. And the third sort of for me. <laughs> right. And so why the new rig? Well, if you don't know, Paul and I met on the road um, last year and we've been together just four months and we quickly ran out of space in three major areas. Outside storage, clothes, and kitchen. So the rig we bought is a Grand Design Solitude. We had a reflection before this. Or... Also made by Grand Design. The reason why we went with Grand Design is that they are the only manufacturer that we know of that understands full-time RV living. And what I mean by that is if something goes wrong with your rig and you're on the road, you're not anywhere near your home dealership where you bought it, with other manufacturers, typically they'll say what? You have to bring it to the dealership to get it repaired. And get in line and yeah. wait, Yeah. maybe months. Now, in the almost a year that I owned the Reflection, I had several things happen, nothing major, but in each case, either a mobile tech came out and fixed it or Grand Design sent the parts directly to me. That is huge as a full-time RVer. You don't want to lose a few months on the road just waiting at a dealership. We purchased a 2020 Grand Design Solitude 310 GK. This camper is 13 and a half feet tall and is wider than most at 101 inches. Our new rig has full body paint, which is an option. It is prepped for a generator, dishwasher, washer dryer and is solar ready. The holding tanks are 93 gallon fresh, 100 gray and 50 black. This rig is well designed for residential living. Many home quality features in the kitchen including plenty of counter space, a four door fridge and pantry. Well, I just love the island. It is amazing. And not one sink, but two. They are awesome. What's so wonderful about this stove is that you actually can use two or all three burners at once because you have the room to overhang your pots. There is a wider oven than normal. And there's also a convection microwave oven. Plenty big. There's even storage up here. Lots of room to put our pots and pans. This drawer is actually set up to be the pet food drawer with a dish for the food and a dish for the water. Check this out, drawers. Lots of places to put things. Mango has his own drawer. Lots and lots of room just to put stuff in the island. A place to put your garbage can. This is often something in most RVs, they don't think about that. The fridge is one of the largest fridges you'll find in an RV. It is 18 cubic feet. And it is gas as well as electric. It is a two-way fridge. And I have to apologize about our pantry. The pantry is awesome, but we have been stocking up. I swear we have three months worth of food right here. And it's nice that there is a light too. So one of the modifications we made is that this glass is frosted glass and that we have learned 
that it scratches easily when you're traveling. Your items can bump up against it and scratch it. So we have lined all of our frosted cupboards with a foam core to protect them. I also like this storage area. We use it for some of our paperwork or extra hardware stuff, but it's nice to have extra counter space right here. This rig has central vac and it has this cool little feature where you can sweep and get rid of your crumbs. We love all the windows, especially in this slide. They really give us a panoramic view. As you can see, you get four chairs with the dining room. Two of them fold up so you can store them away if you like. It has a nice flip top extension making it a little bit longer. But one of the really cool things about this table is that there are no legs. There is no carpet in the slide. In fact, there is no carpet in the living area at all. Love, love, love the recliners. They come with heat and massage and they are power. You can see there is a little table here. Oh, it comes back nice. Now, if you are boondocking, you will need to turn on your generator or you will not be able to use these because they are power. This little table does come out. It's super easy. You just lift up and that's it. Fireplace, it has different settings for the colors as well as um, it does put out a nice amount of heat. And this is my favorite part because I'm not a big TV watcher. So I love that the TV hides away. Okay, I bet there are a lot of people that own the 310 GK that don't know about the hidden storage in the fireplace. It doesn't tell you anywhere, but this, and it's kind of hard to open the first few times, but look at that. We uh, also covered this glass for the same reason, um, the frosted glass. So, we've got storage here and there is a stereo control right here, a little bit of place to put stuff here. This couch makes a queen size bed, it is super easy to open and close. And then there's also tons of storage up here. This is the control panel where you see one of the features this has is heaters for all your tanks, for your gray, black, and your fresh water. You have gas and electric heat. If you are full timing, this is huge. You definitely want to have a dual hot water heater. Um, you have your awnings and your slide controls here as well. And if you have the optional generator, this is where you would go to turn it on. And of course, your water pump. One of the many awesome things about the bedroom is that the bed is on a slide. So that gives you so much floor space. So Mango has a place to sleep, but also it has this really cool feature in that there is a nice big trunk. You can store your shoes or whatever in here and sit down and you still have a little bit of floor space. So the bed platform is designed to be a king bed and the mattress would actually extend and fill it up from side to side. Well, that would make it really hard to make the bed if you can't get into this little space. So we put our queen mattress from the old rig on here and we still have to cut the platform. But once we do that, we'll actually be able to have nightstands. Um, or something there, or some little thing there for storage. And even with the trunk, there is still lots of room under the bed. So there's this little shallow storage right here, which is on top of the trunk, deep storage here, and then there's shallow going up all the way to the head of the bed. Big, 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 big selling point is this huge closet. And this rig is washer dryer ready. We decided not to do that because we want the storage. There's plenty of room here. There's even more hanging space. When I walk around our rig at night, it looks like our lights are off when they actually are on. These are such good night shades and they have a spring so they just pop right up. Of course, there's a TV here too.
I have to say the bathroom is only adequate. Um, it actually does not have as much storage as our last trailer, which was five feet shorter. Um, there is a full size uh, medicine cabinet. The shower is bigger and there's even a little place to sit down. But it has this storage here, which really is not that useful. It is deeper than my arm. I think it's probably, I don't know, maybe 40 some inches deep. So it's not that useful. Um, but we just, you know, throw toilet paper there. The only hanging storage that's in the bathroom are the hooks that Liz has her hands on. So I installed a double bar towel rack. And by the way, it will have to be cut down to fit the space. We also put a, a, a hand towel ring on the wall. Having plenty of outside storage was the number one feature on our list. This pass-through is huge. It has ample room for what full-timers need on the road. Plus, the well-insulated doors feature slam latches. The entrance door and the baggage doors all use one key. But we switched the standard lock for a keypad lock. We've used a keypad lock for about four months on the old rig and we love it. We'll put a link in the description. The front storage is also much bigger on this rig than on our last fifth wheel. This particular unit is prepped for a generator that will run on propane and can be turned on and off inside the rig. Here on the other side of the pass-through, you can see Paul has lots of room for his tools. Here is the Nautilus system in the water bay. They make it super easy to go from boondocking to connecting to city water. And in fact, you just turn a lever to fill your freshwater tanks. You don't need to remove and reconnect the hose. Our unit came with a power reel because those 50 amp cords are so heavy. Because you have to take it all the way off the reel each time to use it, we removed it to give us more storage space. <laughs> so there are definitely some things that are not perfect. We love, love, love our solitude, but we were disappointed, particularly coming from a reflection that some things a reflection had, this doesn't have. Number one is motion lights. In the reflection, anytime that I opened any of the storage, the lights would automatically come on the, as soon as you walk in the hall, right? When you walk bathroom, in the front door. The bathroom light was on, it was a motion light. And the closet light. Yeah. So it was great. I felt like, wow, if I ever go back to bricks and sticks, I want these magic lights that turn on every time I walk into a room. This rig has only one and it's in one of the storages, not in the other two. There are none inside. You're fumbling for a light switch in the, in the middle of the night when you get up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> What's frustrating is we know they can do it because they already did it. One of the big complaints you'll hear about the model that we have are the light switches. There's, there's one central location and it's not convenient if you're, in, if you're sitting down in one of the recliners. You actually have to get up and walk across the room to get to the light switches. Yeah. Um, and then in the bathroom, the light switch is not by the door, you know, where you would think, so you, we still find ourselves reaching yeah. right by the door, but it's actually centered under the mirror. The one in the bedroom is the same way. It's just not convenient. The stairs in fifth wheels are higher than, than the standard staircase. Uh, the building standard for a riser, a stair height, which is called riser, um, is seven inches and ours are eight. And the last one's eight and a quarter. Yeah. So. And that last one gets him every time. Yeah, yeah. Another surprising thing about this rig compared to the reflection is that there are no USB ports in the bedroom. And you know, if the reflection had that, why couldn't they do that in this one? So that brings us to why we're in California. We were in Arizona. We actually had planned to go to Utah, Texas and head east, but we found the rig that we wanted in California. If you watched in the past, you know that we didn't have a really great experience yeah, with the, the dealer. Sales, he the pulled the deal. He's like, no. The and sales process away. went sideways. I got uh, pretty upset with them and I pulled the deal. They yeah. didn't return our phone calls and we were very upset about that. And we want to follow up. After the blow up, um, they were much better. Uh, they, they, as Liz said, they took good care of us. They apologized. They apologized profusely. 
Um, and I, we accepted that. They gave us a bottle of wine they, too. <laughs> yes, they did. So mostly it was a good experience except right at the end. Right at the end. We had one fellow that was working there at the, at the lot that we happened to be in where we were transferring stuff from our rig into the new rig. And rather than a good morning, how you, how you two doing, we got a, how long are you going to be here? It was definitely a, a negative experience with him he maybe he was been... he was having a bad day yeah i have zero tolerance for bad customer service so i give the dealership like a seven i'm pretty happy with them i know that they are not my favorite types of businesses to deal with and i think they did pretty good but i don't know that paul would give them the same no i give them a five we love our rig and if you like this video you'll love the next one we'll see you in the next video